Welcome back to the Deep Digger Sports Pod, the podcast formerly known as the Colorado Football Podcast, the podcast formerly known as the USC Podcast. We got we're Husky we're, team now, baby. We're, we're you dub. I mean, uh, it's been a rough college football season for the fandom because we're we're trying to find our team here. Who who's hot? Who we supporting? Um, with the Pac-12 kind of dispersing, I, I got to admit, I'm bandwagoning right now. And uh, Caleb Williams, what's going on there, man? I'm hopping off. Uh, I mean, back-to-back losses. But before we get into that, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and drop some comments. Be sure to subscribe because we really appreciate it. Uh, it helps us push this content out to other college football you know, enthusiasts such as ourselves. Uh, but yeah, I mean... This has been such a good last season for the Pac-12. If you're going to go out, go out big. And they said, fuck it. Let's pull out all the stops, baby. Uh, Washington is looking awesome. Oregon has uh, a guy who's played, you know, more games than anybody else in college football. They're looking great. Uh, USC flashed. uh, Colorado flashed. So there's just a lot of good football being played, but – <clears throat> yeah, USC goes down. They lose their second game in a row. They lose to Notre Dame last week. They lost to Utah this week. It was a hell of a game. I was pumped the entire time. I just I'm gonna miss Pac-12 football. I'm gonna miss a fucking good late game. Like, ah, just nothing better than just watching you know Pac-12 football at you know eight on the on the West Coast and just feeling good about it, knowing like damn like. This is good. But anyways, I knew that USC was going to lose to Utah. Like, it's just written in the cards. Like, just something in Utah's DNA has that USC, like, we're not going to lose to them. And, uh, yeah, Caleb Williams just didn't look good this entire game. Um, I think he looked real hesitant at certain points. Um, and at so I'm, I was watching it with a bunch of people that didn't really watch college football, and they were like, is this guy really the number one prospect? That's how shaky he looked. Of course, I, we just watched the TV version. We didn't watch the all 22 or whatever. But Caleb Williams pump faked a lot. He looked hesitant to throw into certain windows. Uh, he looked like uh, I just didn't really have a rhythm as far as getting it going. When he did look good, it was when he flashed his athleticism. When he got outside of the pocket, when he made things happen out of no out of nowhere, when he actually took off and, and ran the ball. Uh I don't know. And then after the game, I sent you a tweet immediately. It was from uh Emmanuel Acho, which is probably one of the dumber tweets. Uh actually let me pull it up really quick. But yeah. you go ahead and let me know what you before, were your before thoughts we get on. Into Caleb that, like I think my thoughts on this whole USC to the national title game uh thing. When Lincoln Riley comes to USC and everyone's thinking, all right, put him in a lock for the playoffs and national championships. Um, I was thinking, okay, but the Pac-12, they kind of will have really good teams year in, year out. And then they compete so well within the conference that they get one to two losses here and there to teams that aren't ranked. Like a Utah, like Oregon will beat someone. Like these teams will Oregon devour State each other. Is good this yeah. year. These teams will devour each other into two to three losses, which aren't good to try to make a college playoff. And maybe that'll change now that USC is leaving the Pac-12, that they're going to be in another uh, conference. But that's kind of been the story with Pac-12 teams is like, oh, man, I think they can make it. But now they have two losses. And, you know, I don't. Yeah. As far as Caleb Williams of it, um. I mean, I wasn't really crazy on this hype train thinking like he's Mahomes already and he's the best college quarterback ever, get best prospect ever. Um, I think we needed to see him just consistently do it more. And I see people saying like people legit saying, oh, he's potentially the greatest college quarterback of all time. And I'm like, he does not have that resume. If you're talking talent, maybe. But there's he's nowhere close to grades. He's giving me Justin Herbert vibes right now, where we're crowning Justin Herbert as like a top three quarterback. But like, what have you done? We're not. We don't crown people for talent. We crown them on what they actually accomplish on the field. And so 
he needs to do that on the field. If if he is the best quarterback in the league, has Lincoln Riley, has a great team, he should be going to a college football playoff. That's true. And I think it's also Lincoln Riley's fault. Like, the defense sucks. The defense was just bad the entire game. Utah shouldn't have put – and if you look at uh, Utah's running back, when he went up against this defense, he looked like a man amongst boys. He was just bigger than everybody on that team. And then he was cutting on a dime. And then he was catching balls out of the backfield. It looked fucking crazy to see a legit team that everyone was thinking was playoff contenders just get diced up by this guy. And, again, at one point, people were like, is Caleb Williams really the number one prospect? This guy, Bryson Barnes, is looking much better than him. And, of course, Bryson Barnes threw a pick six towards the end of the game. But the majority of the game, he looked pretty good. And they were like, I don't really see that big of a gap between these two. Notre Dame dominated them last week. Yeah. So Not even close. I don't know if, again, like, let's get to this Emmanuel Acho tweet because I think it was so fucking stupid. He said, with national championship hopes gone, Caleb Williams should consider sitting out the rest of the season. The Heisman is a long shot. College pl- uh, football playoffs are even less likely, and he won't play in the bowl game. The risk of playing far outweighs the reward business decision. I think that's a terrible take. Um, like, what are we doing here? Like, Again, are we crowning people on what we think they can do? Or are we rewarding people for what they're doing and how they like the NFL draft isn't something that gets locked in months in advance like the NBA draft. Like NBA, it's the Victor Webman Giannis sweepstakes, like for a mm-hmm. year. Everyone knows. And this one, it does seem that way where okay, Caleb Williams, he's locked in for like two years. We know he's gonna be the number one pick. But now you're seeing two bad games, the rumors start flowing. It only takes a few teams to start like throwing out storylines and trying to bring Caleb Williams draft stock down, hoping that he falls to them at anywhere past the number one pick. And then who knows then, who, like, who shows think out? About, think about when you are going for this. You've already heard rumblings of this guy wants ownership stake. His dad has already come out and said, we're not playing for a franchise that's in disarray. We'll go back to school. Fuck it. So it doesn't take a whole lot for someone to get in your ear and be like, does he really love football like that? Or is he just famous? Does he really want to be on this team? Or is he just like waiting until he can get out of this contract with you? And so you do start to you know plant seeds. And we see it in last year with CJ Stroud. Everyone thought he was dumb as a box of rocks and it tanked his da- draft stock. It didn't take it that far, but it tanked it enough to where they didn't feel comfortable taking him. It's his number one pick when they probably should have. So you just see things like that start to happen, and you know it's only going to ramp up. Does this guy really love football if he sits out the entire season? He left his uh, his boys behind. Is he a team player? Like, all these things happen, and then you're going to do it off of two losses? Not even like, okay, this is the second loss. The first one happened at the beginning of the season. It's okay. No, these are two bad games back-to-back, and you're going to go ahead and ask him to sit out? That's ridiculous, dude. I think it... In the long run, wouldn't would it affect you as a teammate knowing, okay, this guy is about his bag. Like, he literally sat out half a college football season thinking that he had everything on lock. Like, would you rather have that the guy that sits out half of college football season or a guy like Jalen Hurts who gets benched in a national title game, stays with the team for a whole year as the backup and helps Tua, and then he goes to another team, he plays great, like, which, which guy would you want? Like, the guy really showing that he's dedicated to the team and loves the game? Or the guy who's like, uh, I don't want to I don't want to mess up these millions? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's easy, but uh, I don't know, man. And I see, did see one other tweet like, hey, is it time to start the conversation that some teams are going to prefer Drake May over Caleb Williams? And this was actually a tweet from two days ago. And... Uh, I know Kale, um, Drake May and uh, his team lost yesterday, but I don't think they were – everyone was thinking they were some powerhouse. I just think that, you know, Drake May is talented. Is he talented enough to uproot, you know, the legacy of Caleb Williams? Who knows? 
but there are going to be those conversations had. I mean, th- this might be controversial, but is is Caleb Williams just being a is he he like is he the best option? But he's also a victim of the hype that the people around him are building. Like, I'm gonna compare him to someone uh, in kind of in the NFL circle right now, but Taylor Swift. Mm. Taylor Swift. Mm. Don't is, do it, bud. Don't do it. Taylor Swift is the biggest music artist out in the world right now, selling for a ticket to her concert thousands of dollars for just a ticket to her but that's concert. not also that's not her that's resellers so you but, are what your market but says still, but still the hype is crazy and then someone like me I, I hear taylor swift and i'm like you know music's good but i don't think it's like i wouldn't pay five thousand dollars to a ticket to go see it but like that's where the hype is at and that's where the 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 number is is that like kind of where caleb williams is at like the hype is just so high and yeah he might be close to that hype but we've built him up so high that it's just ridiculous. The only thing I'm going to say to that is there's no such thing as overpaying because someone is willing to pay that price. Like you just set the, like the market sets it. So there is no such thing as overpaying because you're willing to pay that. Like if I set the bar, if I move it from a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and you're still like, yeah, fuck it. I'll pay it. That's on you. That's not on me. Like, so Caleb Williams is just going to roll with it. And yeah, like if he's going to be like, I'm going to call my shot and I want ownership stake and someone does it, that's on them. Like, so, and I just don't think it's going to happen realistically. And I think we are seeing, you know, that he's not this unbreakable, like just perfect prospect. Like he does have things that he needs to work through. And if he just sits there and works through it the rest of the season, I think that's going to be a, like a lot more telling than if he were to just sit out and just leave all these question marks. Who even says that the Heisman's out of reach? Like, what if he puts it together and puts together four amazing games? I, I don't think that it's out of the question that he can get back into that conversation, especially now with the redemption story built in. Like, oh, he was down and out. He could have sat out. He played two terrible games, and now look at the numbers he put up. I think yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think he's done, but uh do you okay? This is me. Maybe I'm nitpicking here. Does he is he kind of small? Does he look kind of small out there? No, I think he's uh built pretty big. I think you're looking at but also maybe his line run is wrong. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, do we have anything else on this? I think we kind of said it. Um Caleb gotta play, gotta prove that he's he is the number one guy. I mean, it's already starting. The storylines. You don't think Drake May's agents or future agents or whatever are like looking at this and thinking, oh, yeah, we're going to leak so many stories or we're going to twist so many narratives to get Drake May to be the number one pick. Oh, yeah, dude. If Yeah, if I'm him, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so got to play. Let us know in the comments. Do you think Caleb Williams can sit out? Do you think he should play? Um, do you think Emmanuel show should never be on TV again? With these takes, let us know in the comments. All right. Later.